Sing it out. Come on. Sing it out to us. And shame into glory. You're the only one who
took a breath. You breathed your life. You've been so, so your fault. No shut on you all.
This moment of total surrender, Lord, we just give ourselves to you. Have your way with our hearts, God. Give us a clear understanding of what it is that you want from us this very day, this very minute. Give us the courage to do it. my voice.
Praise your voices, church. Undefeated. I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated by the power of your name. I am seated in the heavenly place. Thank you, Jesus. Undefeated 
by the power of your name, I am seated in the heavenly place, I'm defeated with the one who has conquered it all. He's conquered it all. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands to heaven today. Hallelujah. Come on, you stand today undefeated because of the power and the authority which we're singing about this morning. Hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look at the person and just laugh. Ha, 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 ha. I said, look at the person next door and just laugh a little bit. See their funny side. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Come on, someone. I, I didn't say to sit down. Stand up. Stand up. If you have a pair of legs that can stand, stand up. Come on. I, I, there's a line in that song which said, giants fall when you stand. Did you hear me? Giants fall when you stand. Hallelujah. I know we are seated with Him in heavenly places, amen, far above, but we stand today in the authority and the victory was Jesus Christ has won. I just think that there's a shout in the house of God today from God's people as this truth resonates the rain of heaven is falling down. Every other voice is being silent as you exercise your authority today and declare the Lordship of Jesus Christ over your life. Amen. Over your circumstance today. Come on, someone shout today and scare the devil. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the living God today. We praise your name. We praise your name. Let me just read this. We're going to praise him a little bit more this morning. Because I think this is a chair standing and a standing to an attention anthem of God that we're singing today. Amen. As you shout, there's a revelation this morning, there's a revelation here today. I didn't know they were singing this song, but this song is exactly the thoughts that the Holy Spirit wants me to share a little bit later on. Okay? And it, and it says this Paul speaking to the church in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It says, In conclusion, in, someone say, in conclusion. It's like, what else can we say to this matter today? What else can we say? All hell may be breaking loose. Everything, and I'm going to pray for some people in just a moment. All hell may be breaking loose. But Paul said, in conclusion, to whatever your circumstance is, to whatever the matter is for you, in conclusion, it says, be weak in the Lord. Did I say it wrong? Yes. Someone shout, be strong. be strong. That's why Paul didn't say be weak and inferior. He said, be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. And it reads on, in the power of His might. Hallelujah. The Amplified says, be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from yourself. No. Someone shout, no. Come on, I'm, I'm here to catch you out this morning. I'm just checking to see if you know your Bible today. It says, draw your strength from Him. Hallelujah. That strength which is boundless might provides. Someone say, I have boundless, limitless strength and might from the Holy Ghost. That's your portion today. Hallelujah. Come on, Harvest Point Church is not a church of insignificant. It's not a weak people. He said, be strong, not weak. Hallelujah. Come on, you are not limited by your humanity. You're not limited by your thinking today. Hallelujah. Come on. You can be if you want to be. But today we're choosing not to be limited by your thinking. 
Do not be limited by your humanity, hallelujah, but be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah to the living God today. Hallelujah. Listen, you know, there's, let me just, we've got about three, a couple of people here who chair, standing, liberated, free women of God. Listen, you won't damage your chairs. Yeah. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. You will not damage the chairs, but there's a sense of a positioning in Christ today that God wants the church of the living God to come into revelation, hallelujah, that you have strength, you have power, and you have the might of the living God today, hallelujah. Woo! You know what? I was, I was waiting for somebody this morning Listen, you say, what's wrong, Mark? You're going crazy. I was waiting for somebody to do a runner. Listen, because if you, you believe the word says you're no longer weak, but you're strong, hallelujah. What God has produced is working my life today, hallelujah. Come on, this song does something. We're singing, we're singing today. There's a shout, there's a sound. Everyone's like, there's a sound, there's a sound. Oh, I said there's a sound of freedom and victory in the house today. Church of the Living God, Church in Bodessa in Harvest Point, Church across Australia, you have authority today through your union with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It says here in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I have given you authority. I've given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all of the power of the enemy or the enemy possesses and nothing shall in any way harm you. Woo! Yes! Ah, someone shared nothing? Someone shared absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Shall in any way harm me? Come on, your mind goes, but Pastor Mark, I've had this happen, I've had that happen, this has gone wrong, that didn't work out, that hasn't happened like I thought, this person let me down, that person failed me. Listen, I've decided a long time ago that nothing, absolutely nothing, I said, 
in absolutely nothing shall by any means harm or hurt me. Hallelujah. Nothing. Oh, man, I love the Word of God, eh? Come on, Harvest Point Church. This is an empowerment today for next week that you can go out. Listen, I'm, and I'm going to pray. I'm going to have an altar call right now because I felt by the Holy Ghost that there's people here today that you've said, I actually fear what's happened to me in the past is going to happen to me again. No, no, that's right. But I just felt this like this love for some people today. There's been probably a week and a half to two weeks where these thoughts have come flooding back into your mind where a circumstance, someone wronged you or something happened or there's, a, and let me listen to me, for some people, it's like a health scare or a health issue that you've been reminded about your parents and the enemy this week and last week has been lying to you and said, what I did to them, I'll do to you. And I today, we say today, no in Jesus' name. Come on, on the authority not on Pastor Mark's authority, but on the authority that's invested in you today, according to the Word of God, you can say to yourself, nothing shall by any means harm or hurt me from this day on in Jesus' name. I felt so strong. It's because it's kind of caused some people to settle back because you've heard this story, you've heard that example, you've heard this thing's gone wrong there. Some of you are fearing the future. Some of you are fearing the artificial intelligence overtaking your life. Some are fearing the economy to break down and cause you to go bust. There's other things and there's other things in your family or circumstances that have happened to you before and you've thought, the devil said to you, I want you to run to the planet, run to the thing now. The devil's lied to you and said, what I did to them, I'll do to you. But you want to make a strong affirmation of a definitely and absolutely no today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Quickly come right now. That's you. Quickly come, 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 come. Come on, come right now. It's a health issue. It could be a relational issue right now. And the enemy has been lying to your brain. He's been even bringing symptoms to your body today. He's caused you to remember a circumstance or a scenario that happened to you and you think, oh my gosh. And the enemy's saying, that's going to happen to you. But today we're going to break it in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me. We sing the song. What was it? Giants fall. Everyone shout, giants fall when we stand. Today, we're standing as a congregation today. And I want to ask you, if your legs aren't tired and you're not feeling weary, just stand to your feet today. With these, as a declaration of faith, come on, if your legs aren't tired today, stand to your feet and say, bless God, I'm going to stand for my brothers and my sisters and together we're believing God today. Come on, we're singing about it. We're, our voice today is bringing miracles today for these people today. Someone shout miracles. Miracles. Miracles are in the house today. Miracles are here today because someone declares to say, I believe God today, amen, that the power of the enemy is broken today in the mighty name of Lord Jesus Christ. Quickly, there's a couple others need to come. Health issue, relational scare, or a perpetual thing that keeps coming up over and over again. Come on, it's going to be broken today off your life. It's going to be broken today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I want you to sing that song. Sing it with every fiber of your being today. And come on, we're believing God for a breakthrough. Amen. Can I have some ushers to come quickly? These people are going to fall. Giants are going to fall. Because the giant's falling. Father, I break its power off. Burst it now. Let it go free in Jesus' name. The power of heaven grows. Mostly right now, I break that thought off you. That perpetual thing that tried to attach itself to you. We loose you now. Jesus' name. Ready? Power of the living God. Go right through you now in Jesus' name.
let's take the knife of heaven. Off you now. There it is. Off. Off you now in Jesus' name. Off you now. Off you now. Off you now. Say it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. Talk to it. Go. Get off her.
kick off every assignment of being right now with the life in Jesus' name. We declare her loose. says you're winning. God says today that I've put His Word, my Word, God speaking to you, my Word in your mouth. There is a release coming, says God. It's not ordained of man. It's not by the will of man. But there's a seed of the Spirit of God which has been deposited in you since 1980. And God says it's still coming to fruition as you have been renewed by the Spirit of God, as you, Steve, have been renewed, the replacement of the old thinking is continuing to happen, God says, and my Word is coming alive. My Word is its not just I know that verse, it's coming alive. And I prophesy today by the power of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name that there's a new sound being birthed from you today that there's a new sound of utterance coming today. And God says, as you begin to allow the Spirit of God to speak from within you, God says, you will also be amazed at what comes out of your mouth. As you open it by the Spirit of God, as you say, I'm not quite sure what to say, that's your carnal thinking says that. You say, but I will speak an utterance of God's Spirit, just that thought process, that's that thinking God says, and I'm going to transform your world. I will transform your family. I will transform your circumstances. I will transform your life. That those things which you have not seen fall to this day, God says, I'm going to do it by my spirit. And because of a change of pattern of words that come from your mouth, that's coming from your spirit today, says God. Because God says, I've put myself in you and you carry truth and you carry the life of God. And God says that the connection happening today has been released in your heart and life today by the power of the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it will produce a flow of life 
but you've hungered, you have hungered, you've desired it so greatly. And God says, you will see the manifestation across relationships, across things that are dear to you. God says, you'll see it happen and you'll find even a greater strength that in this, in this season of your senior years, God says, it's not that your body or your or demeanor gets physically weaker, but God says, I'm strengthening you today with limitless power and might because you've simply formed an agreement today by the Spirit of God with the truth of who God says you are. In Jesus' name, thank you for the refreshing. And I will add this. This is Mark and Steve. It's not a striving. It's not a striving. It's a flow of the Spirit of God. You'll just sense from today, I sense it, that you'll sense it from today that something changes in Jesus' name. We bless you. We love you. And we give God praise for your life today. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' wonderful name. Come on, give Him praise today. We give Him praise. We give Him honor today. Yes. Hallelujah. And you know, Sandy whispered in my ear during the end of praise today. And let me just clarify this. See, what happens, people got this religious concept that if I just got to be still so I can hear the voice of God. You know, and as you praise Him and give Him a shout of honor praise, I, I have personally found that God speaks very clearly while I'm talking. God speaks very clearly while I'm speaking truth and worshiping Him. So you can, let me say clarify, you can have silence. It isn't silence bliss at times. It's very true. So I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't believe the lie or the fallacy that I cannot receive a word or receive a download or receive something as I'm going, Woo! hallelujah. Yeah, what it does is it actually opens my spirit up to receive from God because otherwise your soul wants to suppress you and keep your spirit shut down. It wants to keep it down there. But today there's a lease happening. And we're singing songs like that, these words, and it's all through the scripture. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Shout to God, talk to God, praise God, amen. All the way through scripture. So this is not a Pentecostal Harvest Point Church thing. This is a word of God thing. This is the liberation of the church, amen, to have a voice, to declare what God says is going to happen across Scenic Rim, across Logan, across Southern Downs, amen, as people find their voice in the things of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, someone give Him praise. Give Him a shout of victory today. Give you praise. We give you honor today, Jesus. Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I didn't ask permission for this, but Gary, can we pray for you as a family? I'll pray generically. Generally, I'm going to speak life over you. Would you come? Both of you, you come? Can you come? Evelyn as well? Can you come? God's in the house. God's power. We're singing about the miracle power of God. There's others here today. There's others besides your family that need a miracle today. Are you with me, church? Listen. There's others today that need a miracle. But can we believe God? I'm going to pre- speak deliverance over you as a couple and as a family to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because the answer is in our mouth. The answer of the authority of God is in our mouth today. That's what we speak is what happens to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I speak to any form of illness over your lives and over your family in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to any discomfort over your family and all over your lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to every lie, every symptom today, even things that you may know about today. I speak to those symptoms and I decree an authority of the power of God right now to fall from heaven in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank God today for His mighty, mighty, limitless, boundless power to fall upon you as a couple right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I decree today that you are loose today, loose today by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, that you are loose today from 
every claim of the enemy that wants to come against your life today, that you are loose today in the wonderful, precious, mighty, matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your humanity or the frailty of natural flesh does not dominate and does not control the future. But the Spirit of God from within you, God says, is what dictates the future. And I'm calling your spirit forth today to rise up in Jesus' name and begin to speak what God says about you. Declare who He says you are and you are doing that and you'll continue to do that by faith in Jesus' name. And we link our faith with your faith today and say in Jesus' name, by the stripes of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, you were healed. Hallelujah. So we say today you are healed. Boom! Right now in Jesus' name. Take it. Do this. Take it. Take it. Right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Healing power flows. Healing power flows across this family in Jesus' name. Healing power flow today. Healing the divinity of God. The divinity of God. The life of God. Touches every fiber, every cell of your being right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are a spirit-filled church. We want the church to pray in tongues for a moment. Pray by the Holy Ghost. Everyone in unison, just pray. Talk to God. You're not talking to man. Talk to God. Speak the will of God over this family. Speak the will of God. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Untold blessing, untold favor, untold supernatural power of God to work mightily in their home, in their family, and their lives in Jesus' name. We give you praise this day. We give you praise. We give you honor today to the glory of God. Hallelujah. We declare we believe the report of the Lord. We believe the report of God today. We believe the report of the Lord today. Which is life in Jesus' name. Life in Jesus' name. Life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Give God praise. Give Him praise today. Give Him praise today. Give Him praise. Give Jesus praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. of God, we believe for your power, your presence today, in a glorious, mighty, mighty way, for Jesus Christ and Him alone, He will receive all glory, all honor, all power comes from Him, thank you for the glory of God amongst your people this day, in Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, all the glory, hallelujah, 
bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Someone just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome to church today. God's still operating on people. <laughs> Some people say, why do people fall over? As you can be seen, why don't you welcome the person beside you? I'll talk to you in a moment. Quick, say welcome and say, great to have you at church this morning. Glad you've made it out to Harvest Point Church today. The family's gathered today on this long weekend. Hallelujah. Praise your name. 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 Miracles. Welcome. It's good to have you here at Harvest Point Church today. And uh, we are missing some of the family that have gone driving, touring, holidaying on this long weekend. And uh, you're here today, so welcome those online. Welcome this morning. Great to have you at Harvest Point Church. A church alive. It's worth the drive. Someone shout, it's worth the drive. Who flew here? Anybody flew by plane? A couple of flies. Who came by helicopter? Who came by train? No trains coming. Who bought the horse? The nay tied up at the back. Pastor Errol to build a corral, put the horses in. <laughs> but welcome today, great to have you in this great church. I want to just, we are going to come to communion right now, we're going to at least take a little bit longer. Is that okay, we took a bit longer this morning? I just felt by the Holy Ghost, we wanted to minister to some people and we just want to follow His leading, amen. And uh, I was going to say before, some people say, well, you know, why do people fall? How come people fall over? Is it necessary to fall over? Well, it's only necessary unless it's necessary. catch that? It's necessary if it's necessary. Because Pastor Errol and I were talking this morning, you know when those, those officials came to take Jesus away and the power and the glory of God to them and Jesus just began to speak and the power of God hit those what they call people, soldiers, temple guards. Jesus spoke and the power of God and I've read, read teaching from um, the gentleman's name who does the Greek, um, Rick Renner. He said that the, the numbers of people involved in that crowd were hundreds. And the power of God just slew the lot of them. Whoosh. And it says they fell backwards as he spoke the word. They were coming to take him away. And I just realized when a doctor, you go to see a physical doctor, he lays you on the table to do operation. Is that right? There's no, no, no to reason why God would put you on His operating table and go to work on you. Who knows that there's an operation happening right here? Come on. Are you hearing me today? Someone shout, there's an operation. A heavenly operation is happening right here today to the glory of God. Amen. Yeah, we believe God. Don't doubt. Don't, don't be confused. Don't wonder. If the power of God hits you, you'll know it, and you can't stand. Sometimes if you feel like you want to just lay down anyway, it's okay. Is that okay? I just want to demystify all the rubbish and the religion that people want to go on about. To the glory of God, amen. I've been hit that strong. I flew back a couple of rows of chairs in some meetings. The power of God touches you that strong. Boom. But you know what? You can stand like this. I got this. Temple guards thought they've got this too. We've got him. We've got Jesus. Jesus cornered. He just spoken. Whoosh. But I want to encourage you that we don't have to go like, I'm going to test it out and see if God will. You can just say, Father, I receive today of all that you have for my life the cleansing, the refreshing, the healing, the 
divinity of God touch your life in Jesus' name. I'm just going to come and pray for you. You know what I'm talking today? Because I've got no microphone for you. See that? Huh? I figured you out. I put this on today so Father Greggy couldn't talk. No. Let me hold your hand. Just reach your hands toward this wonderful man, everybody. We continue every week to believe God for Farmer Pastor Greggy. Evangelist Greggy. He's operating on you. Amen. We'll leave you in the chair for now. We won't put you on the floor. We're going out fast. We'll bring Jerome chair to church. Just release your faith right now. Just release God's spirit to touch this wonderful man of God. God's raising him up to be an ambassador for God's kingdom. Father, we speak to the youth body now and we command the continuation of the life of God to touch every muscle, every fibre, every nerve end right now. Lord, join and bring the connections together. We speak it today by the Spirit of God. Let these legs continue to be strengthened. Let them move in Jesus' name. Let this right hand get strength and mobility back. We call it to have mobility today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Legs become stronger. Let me just undo this, ready? name, we speak the life of God. We command Lord, the nerves and the muscles to loose, loose the members of His body now. Loose them now. Loose them now in Jesus' name. We thank You for God's powerful anointing to go right through this man. On this right arm, left arm, left arm. Loose it now and let it go. Legs, come on, move, move. Feet move right now. Ankles strengthen. Muscles, sinews, tendons become functional, we pray. Let the connections, Lord God, the wiring, Lord, be rerouted and be reconnected by the Spirit of God that this body will perform as Greggy wants it to perform, as God intended to be made that way. We command, Lord, the issues from this illness today, the power of them, Lord, the, the, the devastating destruction, we command that to be broken today off this life. In Jesus' name, thank you for God life flowing into every part of his being right now in Jesus' name. His testimony is every week he's getting stronger and stronger. So we agree today in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We give God the praise. I command these hands to become loose. Loose today. Loose in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' wonderful name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Command those tenants to be loose. The nerve, let that go right now. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. Mambro kambranta siki to tondo. Mambra tore me be to to karamabranda rama soko kiche. Thank you, Jesus, for your power. You felt that, didn't you? Oh, oh. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. In Jesus' name. What's this? What's this? Yeah, yeah. They are coming out. They're coming out. He's pulling the fingers out right now. Things like that. Can we just say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody believe God today. Somebody's going to believe God today. Miracles are breaking out. Miracles are breaking out in Jesus' name. Miracles are breaking out today in the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, children, they gone? Did they go? Did I cut them loose? Somebody did. Say it got distracted. Harvest kids have a great day. Tamara, Tammy is going to come and lead us around communion. Lord, we just bless her as she comes today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you haven't got your little emblem today, you're new visiting or you didn't get one on the way in, the host will make sure you've got a cup. And uh, let's just prepare those emblems as Tammy leads us today in song and worship before God. Hey, you need that. changed up. We've had a, a breakage, a machinery breakdown. We've got lots of different equipment today. Does that make sense? God bless you. Give us a shot, please.
couldn't drive myself, so my awesome son Wyatt drove me, um, which I was really, really thankful for. And then he went and got some groceries for me while I waited in the doctor's surgery. Um, while I was there, I started to feel a bit dizzy. So, I, you know, you, as you do, you sit and you put your sort of head down. And that wasn't working, so I sat my head back. And then I flaked out. Um, I came to and uh, was shaky, um, was able to ring Wyatt and he comes straight away, bless him, um, and totally supported me. I was a really proud mama at that moment. <laughs> um, thinking about it later though, uh, apart from it being totally embarrassing, um, I thought, wow, no one in the waiting room actually came to see if I was okay. Like... Yeah, or at all. Um, not even, not even the reception staff. Um, even the lady that was sitting next to me before I flaked had moved a seat over, so, so I must have looked aside. <laughs> um, oh gosh, could you imagine it? Like, uh, tongue might have been out. I couldn't have been out for too long because there was no drool coming out of my mouth. So it's, it's all good. Um, and I found it, I found it hard to get my head around that because. I know me and I know that in that situation if I saw somebody like that I would have helped them even if the situation was might have been dangerous or, or, or dodgy in some way I would have at least gone to the reception staff and said hey that person over there's just flaked can you go check on them just, you know, I'll stand here but just go check on them because um, it's the right thing to do it's, it's the caring thing to do it's the kind thing to do um, the dictionary's definition of kindness is the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. I don't know about you, but in this world today, what I'm seeing is is not people being friendly, not being generous, and not really being considerate. I'm seeing, sadly, there's so much anger, there's madness, there's meanness, there's fear, so much fear, there's craziness, and there's so much brokenness and it, it, it seems to be magnifying and, and that's not okay that, that's not cool our world needs kindness more than ever um, I, I refuse to accept living in a world where showing kindness is is not the norm it has to be it has to be um There's a song that I really like to listen to. It's called Be Kind by Jason Gray. It's 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 an upbeat song, but it's got a really good message. And, and the two lines that he says is, be kind. Everyone is fighting their own battle and everyone needs to know they matter. When you are kind to somebody, you are letting them know they matter. They matter. They're not just a number. They're, they're, they're not just no one, but they matter. It's important. It's not our business to know everyone else's business. I, I get that. But if we could just remember that everyone, they have a history and they have a backstory to why they're acting in each situation. If, if we realise that, then we, then we don't have to understand their behaviour at that time. We just have to understand that there may be more to it than what they're presenting to us in that moment. Example, you're on the road and, and some person behind you is tailgating you beeping the horn trying to thing over past you it's so easy to just retaliate and get angry and go oi doofus what are you doing like seriously you you don't know why they're doing that it could be that they've just found out they've got a loved one in hospital they're they're not thinking straight they just want to get there they just want to you don't matter in that moment they just want to get there so so be kind if you can get them past then then do that that's just one situation. There's so many layers to each situation, like an onion. Um, and like I said, we don't have to know what it is, but we have to just know that maybe there is a reason behind things. Um, sometimes, though, it, there there doesn't seem to be a reason or, you, or that person's wronged you in some way. Well, Ephesians verse 4, chapter 32 Um, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven 
you. And Luke, um, verse 6, chapter 27 to 31. This is, oh, this is so powerful. This is, I go to this often because it is just, it's so true. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give to anyone who asks. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. And do to others as you would like them to do to you. I didn't grow up in a Christian family, but that is something my mum always said to me. Do to others as you would want them to do to you. struggle especially if you don't feel we you know you can be kind in every situation or it just doesn't make that make a sense but as I said before we desperately need more kindness in this world can you imagine how different this world would be if kindness was at its core sadly being kind is often seen as weakness seen as being soft Jesus throughout the Bible shows us act of kindness and he shows us that it takes so much strength. Luke 27, uh, verse 27, 47. Yeah, chapter 47. But even as Jesus said this, this is when Judas betrayed, uh, Judas betrayed Jesus. Um, even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached led by Judas. One of the 12 disciples, Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas you betray the son of man with a kiss when the other disciples saw that was about to happen they exclaimed lord should we fight we bought the swords can you imagine it we brought the swords let's just take them out so <laughs> you can just imagine it can you um and more of them struck at the high priest's slave and slashed off his right ear oh my goodness so dramatic but jesus said no more of this and he touched the man's ear and healed him i mean oh my Oh my goodness, in, in spite of the fact that he's about to go on the cross, his imminent death is coming, Jesus still found it in him to be kind to that person. And that person was about to arrest him and he healed him like that. I don't know. I, I don't know if I'd be like that in that situation, but I'm not Jesus. But yeah, I mean, it's it sometimes takes a bit of courage, doesn't it? As you can clearly see... Um, Kindness, it, it's strong. It takes strength. It's courageous. It takes self-control. It can be hard to do in certain situations. You got somebody screaming at you in your face. Like, you know, you don't want to be kind to them. You want to yell back, or you want to bop them one. You don't want to be kind to them. It, it, it takes courage. It takes strength, and it requires us to go out of our way. Okay, I'm sorry, I've been rambling. I'm wrapping it up now. Look what Jesus did for us. Look what he went through for us. The pain and the agony, the torture, the betrayal, the embarrassment, the rejection. The act of Jesus as he willingly gave himself for us, his kindness personified. fruit of the spirit it's read that it's an attribute of a godly life that the Holy Spirit works to develop in the lives of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our saviour and in this day and age it's more important than ever to flow that fruit of the spirit kindness to those around us wherever we go, wherever we can big or small as we take our emblems today can we take a moment to let the magnitude of what Jesus did for us on that cross wash over us. That crazy, crazy, humongous act of kindness he did for us. And as we walk out of these doors today, 
can we have it on our hearts to walk through this world with kindness being the most important daily objective because it is. Make sure what you're saying and what you're doing is lifting people up, not tearing them down. It's that simple. Um, there's a T-shirt that I really like and it says on it, kindness is free, so sprinkle that stuff everywhere. appreciate that it was an, such an act of love and kindness and we appreciate that showing kindness to others is a strength that we should show and we should go through like warriors in this world where it's needed. Thank you Jesus for loving us so much that you did that for us. In Jesus name, Amen. person or fully acknowledge what they're saying, but be kind because the communication will stay open for a comeback later through fellowship and relationship. And things can be talked about to be right. So you just eat that all the time. Today is our, um, we're going to flow straight into our annual general meeting. And so um, we're not dispersing, we're not breaking. Um, looks like time's beat us again for many reasons. And also we usually just keep going. Let me just clarify that again. Some days we do, do keep we do keep going. Ryan Mitchell last week talked about lingering. Remember that? Ever say linger? So there's time for lingering in God's presence and making time for that. There's other times we respect other people, their time, their busy schedules, the things they're going to do. While the Holy Ghost needs time to move, there's a meal being prepared for you out there. There's some yummy food. We want to respect their work of labor of love to us. And so we can disperse you so you can enjoy that food. Amen. So there's things we can keep changing up and it becomes a flow here at Harvest Point Church. So God ministers. That was a powerful word that tomorrow brought. That was the word of the Lord for today. Let's give God praise. Come on. Better to be kind than right in many instances. Hallelujah. But as we come out giving this morning, just one thought, one verse. Everyone say one verse. It's a passage or a verse you know very well. Psalm 23, 
verse 1 says, who can quote it for me? Yep, you got that one? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Isn't that such a declaration? We've been singing this morning about what we give voice to. Is that right? What are we saying? And I want to encourage us today, encourage you not to talk lack. Do not talk lack over your family. While the economy and everything's up and down and, you know, will we have cash next year, 2025? Won't we? Will we? You know what I mean? There's all this conversation, how we operate. You know, let me just say this statement today. And I can't tell any of you what to do with your money or how to do it. But let me encourage you. Why don't you go and get dollars out of the bank once a week, once a fortnight, or a couple of times a week if you need to, go and get some cash out and walk around with a wad full of cash. Do you know that there's, carefully, but you know there's more, there's more fraudulent activity and cyber attack than what there is on muggings and taking people's cash. There's more intellectual intelligence coming after your privacy and your security than what there is in carrying some notes around and hiding. So I want to encourage you, if we want to keep cash circulating, because I hear rumours of like, this bank will have no cash in a month's time and you can't get it out and this guy, who knows we like a bit of, pa- a bit of cash. And let me explain, why do we like, we like cash because it brings us independence. It actually gives us privacy about where we spend our money and where we're at. Because you know what, if you use a card everywhere, they can tap you, they can, they can, if you tap the card, they'll track you from here to Townsville and back to Canberra, right? But if you say, I wanna just cruise around incognito, so I got cash in my wallet and I buy fuel at that service station and I buy a hamburger with cash and I get a coffee with cash, amen. And they've got no clue financially tracking you where you are. And it's still, cash is still the economy and the economy of Australia. Is that true? It's true. So I'm just, this is a little bit of an advert here. So please church, where possible, Pay by cash. Go and get cash out. And you know, if you do that, we'll hold, we'll hold back the enforcement of being forced out of not using cash. All right? Children need to be taught how to the, the, the feel of money and the notes and the value of it. And that if you've got this many here and you take some away, you go, oh no, where's it going to? Right? There's something about that feel, there's something about the touch, there's something about the physical presence of that understanding the value of what we're dealing with. So we can train our children, train your grandkids, have some notes, have some dollars and teach them about using the money and using the the currency that's a legal tenure, it's a legal currency in Australia to this day. They are trying to force and phase it out but while we hold on to it, they can't let it go, amen? So Thomas David said, the Lord is my shepherd, shall not want, or another translation says, I shall not lack. And so I want to encourage you, your confession can be because God is my shepherd. You know what a shepherd provides for his sheep? Takes care of their needs, takes care of their desires, need to feed, need to drink, all right? God Almighty is your shepherd. He said, you shall not. So this is like something that it's come alive in my spirit some years ago. I shall not lack any good thing. Amen. So you've got to get your speaker, your confession in line with that truth. That's a psalm of David, which we quote at funerals and do all this nice stuff with, but it's a spiritual force that you can grab a hold and say, God is my shepherd today. Another verse in the, in the book of Psalms says, some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. So there's, there's strength out there that other people place there. You know, some trust in their superannuation, some trust in their investment, some trust in the cash in the bank. But David said, I will, God is my shepherd because He is my provider. I shall not lack or want. Hallelujah. Can you lock this in today? And, and the more we see the encroachment of other influences wanting to control your life, you need to have this revelation that God, He truly is my shepherd. 
Someone say, he's my shepherd. I shall not want. Amen. Another verse, another translation says here, let me read it to you. The Lord is my shepherd. The New Living Translation says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. I have all that I need. There's weeks ago, I'm not sure if I've got enough. That's the wrong confession. Because the Word of God says, God is my shepherd. I'll have all that I need. The Passion Translation says this, Yahweh is my best friend and my shepherd. Hallelujah. He says, I will always have more than enough. Mm. So as you so see this morning, as you give, this is a very generous church, amen. Probably a bit over $900 was given Sunday night to stand good enough. He came and spoke here. So thank you, church. We want to bless that man as he goes back to Israel from last Sunday. Praise God, amen. But you know what? Because you do so, see, I want you to, don't go, oh, well, through the week going, well, you know, my investment will work here and I've got superannuation here and I've got this happening over there. Say, God, you alone are my supply. Therefore, the wisdom, the intelligence doesn't come from the world system. It comes from God Almighty. I continually try to encourage us as I see the encroachment of things happening. We have to have our trust and our security, not in what we can do, but in the living God. And we must give voice to that. Amen. Someone said, I'll have more than enough. I'll have more than enough. I wrote this statement down. It says, I do not lack, I shall not want, I do not lack for ability, I do not lack for opportunity, I never lack for money, I do not lack for strength because the Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. Father, bless your people today as they give. Lord, this is a very, very generous church. As people give of the tithe and the tithe does belong to God. It was before the law was given and it flows right through to Jesus comes back. Amen. Because it belongs to God. You get to keep 90%. Is that right? One tenth belongs to God. And it opens up the windows of heaven upon your life in a powerful way. Father, bless your people today as they sow seed. Thank you for this generous church. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I encourage you today, don't never go for me today and say, oh, I don't think I've got enough. David said, the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want lack. I will have more than enough in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, stewards. The details on the screen. There's the bags coming around for your cash. Hallelujah. Go and get thousands out and bring it in a wad. <laughs> Make checks payable to Harvest Point Church. Amen. Who's got a checkbook still? They're finished in Australia. Oh, you've got one. Hallelujah. Does it still work? Praise the Lord. It's great. Good job. Someone say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So praise God. While we're receiving that giving, I'm going to ask Pastor Grace to come. Who knows, it's Mother's Day next Sunday. Who loves Mother's Day? Well, we've got a few special things happening next, month, next Mother's Day. There's a few little things happening in the life of the service here. A few special things happening. But we've also got a guest speaker coming, Alwyn Matt. Uh, he now lives in Dubai. He's a Kuwaiti man. He's been here before. He's going to come and pre speak powerfully. And uh, he'll be here on Sunday morning. And um, Pastor Grace, please. Good morning, church. Uh, excuse me. Hello. That's all right. Um, so great to see you. I just wanted to let you know about our frontline um, ladies afternoon tea next Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock in the cafe. Um, it's going to be a great time for women and girls to bring their mums and their grandmas and their aunties and their and their nieces and their daughters come along and um, enjoy. We have a guest speaker, Sarah Chisman, and she's from Glory Church on the north side of Brisbane. Very, very good. Um, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a few more hostesses for the day, for the afternoon. What, what that means is that one, a lady puts up her hand and says, I will hostess one table, which means that you decorate it and you put the food on it. Now, that table only seats eight people, and one of them will be you. So it's not a big thing, but it's, you don't have to bring the women to put around it. You can. But I'm just looking for some hostesses to say, I will host a table. And um, in that way... It gives you ownership 
to the day, to the afternoon. And it gives you an opportunity to love on other women. How's that? So if you're able to do that, come and see me after. Um, I've, I've got about eight more tables, so I need about eight more hostesses. So if you're able to do that, come and just put it, give me your name after. That would be really great. Um, no pressure, but it is an opportunity for us all to be kind. How's that? You can show your kindness to other women through hosting a table. Now, some women are going all out. And some, like me, will be quite simple. So there's no pressure on how, what your table looks like or what you do at, with that table. It's your choice. But it's just an opportunity for you to love on others. So thank you. I look forward to seeing you all at 4 o'clock. There will be stalls as well. So bring some cash. Bring some cash. <laughs> if you haven't got a gift for your mother yet, it's a good time to get one right there. Thank you, Mark. Great. Thank you, Grace. Isn't that wonderful? So the ladies are on this Saturday coming. 4 p.m. Front my women. So um, I'm going to ask Victoria, you to come up quickly. We've got another home group starting up, being launched. I've just asked Victoria to come and just say a quick couple of words. Storm, why don't you come and stand with your wife? And just so people know who you are. And this group's going to be starting in Flagstone. And I just asked Victoria to come and introduce themselves very quickly this morning in the service. This is Victoria and Stormy. And <laughs> Victorine. Victorine. Sorry, my bro- I'll just call you Vicky. It's okay. Is that right? Yeah, it's okay. What, what do you like prefer? Vicky. Vicky. Yeah. Everyone say, hi, Vicky. Hi, Vicky. Hi, Victorine. I'm learning lessons all the time. That's good, because our lives are learning lessons. Yeah, yeah. I just want to introduce these guys to the church. They've been around for a while. They were moved from the Gold Coast. And uh, so we're going to have a home group happening in Flagstone. So I want these guys to tell them where they are, what God's showing them, and your address. Just speak it out. There is, um, it'll be on the email. Is that right? Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, Pastor um, Mark. Um, uh, I'm just going to say, um, morning, church. Um, Stormy and I both would like to invite you. If we could put my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> to our next home group in Flagstone at 12 Hayward Way um, at Thursday, the 9th of May at 6.30 Join us for an open floor discussion regarding the Holy Spirit and bring your thoughts around a scripture of your choice. Focus on him. All is welcome. Light snacks will be available. And just RSVP RS, RS me. <laughs> what part did you, couldn't you hear? <laughs> but yeah, that's all. Um, and we um, welcome you all and would like to see you there. Thank you so much. And if Storm wants to say something, I don't know if you want to say something, Storm. Did you say the day? Um, it's Thursday. This time, this Thursday. Thursday on the 9th of May at 6.30 p.m. 6.30, yes. 6.30, got it. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> I really don't have much to add to that. There's not much that we can say. We've had, we've had one run at a home group, and Pastor Mark's the only one that showed up. <laughs> And that was awesome. We, we, we were able to have such, a, such an awesome discussion about not only the Holy Spirit, about other things that, that we face in the world that, con- that are confronting. And um, I would say more. I, I do want to say mm. the Holy Spirit told me to, to, to testify mm-hmm. that... <clears throat> During the praise, and this is a big deal for me. <laughs> During the praise and worship, and we were singing the song, when when my mouth is opened up, miracles come. You know, you know the verse. Uh, I was involved in a very serious motorcycle accident two years ago, <clears throat> in August, and. I won't go into that because that's a testimony that I'll tell at a later time. But as a result of that, I lost my, my face was crushed. I lost my upper and lower jaw bone. My teeth were, were knocked out, of course. And the doctors did a wonderful job putting me back together. But, but as they were uh, 
finishing up their thing, they, they pulled tubes out of my nose and out of my, my throat. And as they pulled the one out of my throat, they, they did it really quickly. And I think, I, I don't know, but I think it's, it scarred my, my vocal cords. It, that's why I have a raspy voice now. Um, a, year, a year or two ago, I was in a praise and worship team for Harvest Point in Canungra. Some of you know that. So I play, I play guitar and sing. I haven't been able to sing since then. I haven't, <clears throat> my voice, um, in the beginning, you couldn't hear my voice. You couldn't hear me say anything. And as time went on, and God worked on me, and, and God could heal me like that. But he's teaching me a lesson. He's teaching me to be thankful. Um, during that song, I'll get back to what I started with. My voice started working again. <laughs> I um, <clears throat> I haven't been able. I can play play guitar no problem whatsoever, but I couldn't sing. I couldn't. My my range just went away. I was singing monotone. I could sing like this, like I'm talking. But during that, but during praise and worship, I mean, Holy Spirit is just <laughs> He's filled this room. And he, he settled down on me, and my voice started working. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> the, so um, so our, our home group is all about the Holy Spirit. And it's for that very reason that, that we will discuss. It'll be an open, like open floor discussion. We're not, we're not teachers. We're believers in God. And, and we live a godly life. And we want to share our life with you guys. So come join us. <laughs> come join us and, and, you know, we'll learn something from it too, I'm sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Stormy. So obviously, if you live in that area, you need to go because it's close. It's going to be Thursday. And uh, if you, you can travel from anywhere because the home group are live. Worth the drive. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, Shelley and Emmanuel, quickly going to come down and testify. You had a great day at the markets. Wonderful Jesus. Woo. Good morning, everyone. So we're going to do a little woohoo. Um, First, glory, glory, glory to our Lord God. Everything that happens in our markets is all the Holy Spirit. It is all God. We are just there and we're privileged to be there. Um, we, had, we always have an amazing time at the markets. This Saturday was just overwhelming. It was just full, full, full. I think everybody in the markets had sore necks and rubber necking. What's going on in our tent? <laughs> Because we had one guy, um, he came in with back pain. back pain. There and then, God healed him. His leg grew out. I was watching it. Like my mind, Woo! your mind sometimes thinks that's not true. But I'm watching it and, you know, and he said, oh, I'm still, and don't matter, God's got it all. And it was all amazing. There was people we spoke to, people who were broken, and we got to pray with them and, and God just healed their hearts. And, but we had this one beautiful, gorgeous lady with a little, little couple of kids in tow. Um, a couple of months ago, God said to me, put the Lord's Prayer in your tent. It is, it is like a pillar. So she came walking along and she just stood in front of it and she read it right loud, loud as anything in the, in the, in the marketplace. And, uh, and I just stood beside her and I said, you know, it's true, everything that's on there. It, it's true that is what is on, on earth is in heaven. What is in heaven is in earth. All we have to do is call out. And she, she just looked at me and she said, it's true, I'm now six months sober. And I said, oh, hun, let me please hug you because that is, that's hard, you know. And... 
Um, and I just gave her this big embrace. And she said, God prepared the way for me for that. And I said, oh, tell me all about it. And she said, um, she must have been on a bender, I guess. And uh, she had decided she needed to go to the hospital and get help. She needed help. And then she said, oh, well, how can I got no shoes? She ended up, said she goes through the bush. There is a brand new pair of shoes of her size. So don't despise the small things. Her exact size for her to walk to go to the hospital. She gets there, meets a lady who's a Christian. Takes her under her wing. Anyway, six, I know just six months down the track, so far she's um, living a different life, Amen. so far. So I said to her, so do, do you know Jesus? Do you, is he, do you have him in your heart? And she goes, well, I'm really not too sure. And so I said, well, do you want to? Her zest for, for yes was incredible. She says, yes, I want it, I want it now. So we, we had a little set free cards, we gave everyone our cards, we led her to the Lord there and then. God just healed her there and then. It was... It was... Celebration! <laughs> so... Um, she, she's a beautiful young lady with beautiful children. Um, we have invited her. At the moment, she's working Sundays. So we're going to plan, we're going to talk to God. God's got the job done. If he can prepare shoes on the way, he's got her sorted out to be coming here. Amen. You know, and she needs some loving. She needs some kindness. She just texted me because I've been talking to her last night. And she said, you have no idea what that hug meant. It just was what I really, really needed. You know, the little things that happen on our, on our journeys are really big to other people. So don't despise those little moments that you do kindness to someone, just like we talked about. That hug, that embrace, that are you okay? Or do you understand? And there are so many people searching for the love of Jesus Christ. And as a congregation, I know that we are all in unity of this, but I really want to do this as an encouragement to you. We are just two simple people out in a market. We're not the highly educated or this or the that, but we just love God and we love people. And to all of that is the glory. All to that is the glory. Um, Also, she didn't have a Bible so I gave her my Bible because I, I got, bought another one. And um, I just want to thank God because we have the authority. We just open our mouths and, and show up and he does the work. The Holy Spirit does the work. And um, also I'd like to make a call out. We've given away over 80 plus Bibles this year so far. If you have a Bible that you don't need or want to give to us and we can give it out to people out there. Thank you. Just stay here for a minute. Isn't that wonderful? Such a, this is a very special part of the life of this church, amen? It's an important part of the life of the church. So, Shelley and Manuel, we thank God for you today. We thank God for your humbleness. We thank God for the spirit of the living God that worketh within you. And God just keeps calling us people who are uneducated all the time. <clears throat> he just does it all the time. And he flows powerfully through you and he's using you mightily. And Father, we just decree a blessing upon them this day. Thank you that every need is met. Thank you that you're moving powerfully, Lord, the anointing as they minister and they declare, speak the word of God. Hearts open up. Hearts are opening up to the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving salvation. Thank you, Lord, that they don't go with empty words, but they go with mouths filled with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We bless them as a couple, personally. We thank God for their family. Lord, the cries of their hearts for their family. We thank you, Lord, that you hear their cry. And whilst they minister and show kindness, Lord, you're working on their behalf. There's a miracle happening back at home. There's a miracle happening back home. 
While you go, God says, I'm working at home. And Father, we take that promise and we exercise that authority. We join our hearts with Shelley and Emmanuel today. And we thank God for their labor of love. We thank God for their ministry today. We thank God for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Salvation. Salvation, salvation, salvation. Hallelujah. I challenge you, church. If we can get Bibles to Africa, Malawi, we can get Bibles to them. Yes? So, who's going to buy or give a Bible? Come on, hands up. Who's going to buy or give a Bible to Shelley and Manuel? All right? God sees your hand. Make sure you honour that. Thank you. That's one for me and one for you, Grace. Grace is doing ten. Well, you know what? Now it's time to. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Look at the talk. Look at the clock. What the? Where'd that go to? When you're with friends and have fun, it just goes so quickly, doesn't it? Can you believe it's 10 past the official finishing time? Okay, can I have a couple of people, please, to bring that white table and those three chairs up here to the, wherever we need it. <clears throat> While they're doing it over there, I began to share a couple of thoughts the other day. And it's really about the authority of God, and we, we've, we've heard about it in the song today, God's ministered powerfully. And this table is just coming up here because the AGM is about to happen, so don't go anywhere. It won't take a moment. We're going to just run through and uh, bless you with some great information today. Um, but how many are glad that the power's on in the building today?